Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this, it is a gorgeous Sunday morning because we're in the Lord's house, amen. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, took a little leave. I wanted to thank uh, Chuck Collins for preaching in my stead. Uh, missed everybody and just incredibly excited to begin this new year, 2016. There's an awful lot of announcements. Check out the, the back and the kiosk and, and your email blast and so forth. On the calendar in the, in the Bolton, there's just a couple of things I'd like to add. A reminder, on Tuesday the 12th, there's a, there is a finance meeting at 7 o'clock. Thursday the 14th, uh, my Bible study will continue with the study of the Gospel of Matthew. And then Saturday at 8.30, if you are interested in the mission trip coming up the end of June, or if you are going, uh, we have a meeting at 8.30. 9.30, Jennifer, is your mission meeting? 9.30 is the mission meeting, and 10 o'clock, the security task force will be meeting. Uh, also, we are receiving new members on January 31st. If you'd like to be a, a, a member and be recognized at that time, please let me know. Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to let you know that our Chili Bowl is back again this year. It's on January 30th, which is a Saturday. Um, it's always the Saturday before the Super Bowl. So we want you to wear your favorite sports uh, shirts and come out for some uh, fun fellowship and some friendly competition. Uh, last year's winner is, has moved out of state. It was Beth Allen's granddaughter or something like that, and she's not here. So the first place trophy is up for grabs, and Darla Gray... Uh, came in second, and she's always a contender and has won it before. So if you think you've got uh, uh, the best chili, uh, bring it on out. There's a sign-up sheet that is on our missions board, which is across from the coat rack down the hall. So sign your name. Even if you uh, don't want to make chili, please come. It's five bucks a person. If you bring chili, it's free. You're f it's free. Kids are free. It's just a, a fun time to get together in the middle of winter and if you don't like chili that's okay because we also have soups and hot dogs so it's just kind of appeals to everybody so come on out it's a great time and uh we'll see you there thanks okay adrian good morning i would really love to have everybody at our women's retreat on the weekend of April 22nd through the 24th. It should be an excellent retreat. It is down at Carlisle Inn, which is a beautiful inn in Sugar Creek, Ohio. And we often carpool down there. So once again, we would love to have everybody come and join us. And more information on the retreat will be forthcoming. Kim Russell. Um, good morning. I wanted to remind everyone that we're starting a new study today in between services called Living Your Strengths. We would love to have you come join us. It is about discovering your God-given uh, talents and how you can make those into strengths by um, being more aware of them and optimizing them. So please come down. We have books. Everyone is welcome. I would love to see more people join us. We're in the classroom. What number is that? I think it's 210. It's right past uh, the um, young adult, the Christian, not Christian ed, but the youth. the youth office on the left, across from like where the choir room is. Come down and give us a shot. Hope to see you there. There is a sign. Okay. Well, thank you. With that, let us greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fire. 
You will find it on page 177 in your hymnal, and please sing two times through. standing for our opening prayer. Gracious God, as we remember our baptism and the joy of salvation you offer us, enliven our souls and empower our lives by your Holy Spirit to continue faithful witness to our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing hymn number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
may be seated. That hymn epitomizes the joy that God gives us. And that's part of the reason why we come here at the beginning of every year to reaffirm our faith, reaffirm our baptism, just to rekindle the joy that God has given to us from the moment we were conceived that's been in our souls. And so we sing for joy, and we feel the joy of God's presence with us. It's truly a joy being God's house this day. It is a joy to, to do the Lord's work. It is a joy to celebrate uh, God's presence. So we gather here humbly, acknowledging who we are. Most importantly, we celebrate whose we are. So uh, many joys surround us, uh, joys of new beginnings. We have many new studies happening. Uh, the Strength Finders is really a great, great study, it, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a Christian uh, way of looking at the, the gifts that God has given us to identify those and to use them for the glory of God. It's really a, it's a wonderful, wonderful study. Uh, I would recommend that highly to everybody. Uh, the joy of, of all the studies, the joy of, of leadership. We have a few new leaders in our midst here for some of our committees and, and so forth, and so we celebrate them as well. Um, with the joys, though, are many concerns, so please note those on the prayer list. Are there any that you would like to add, joys or concerns? Uh, the group are, is um, from the Little Theater are going to be going down to Atlanta, and I just want to wish them well and safe travel. <laughs> there is a, gr a large group of kids that will be going down with Sharon. Safe travels down to Atlanta, and, and for the adult leaders. Um, unspoken. Unspoken. Prayers unspoken. Are there others? Uh, my husband Joe is having a knee replacement done tomorrow, so please keep him in your prayers. Thank you. Joe Gavin, knee replacement tomorrow. Joyce, that I um, had a procedure on Thursday and everything was fine. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. All right. The gift of healing. We need to keep Karen and Ed, who sit right there every Sunday, in their, our prayers because they left today to go be gone for four months. So we need oh, to keep boy. them in our prayers. Prayers for Karen and Ed, safe travels, and wherever they go. Yeah, I'd like to uh, have the church pray for my brother and my sister. They're both struggling with cancer, and Mary's sister has some health problems also, so it's tough to get old, isn't it? It is. It is. Well, keep your whole family in prayer. Uh, prayers for Kimberly and Gabe. They're leaving in a couple hours to drive down to LSU, and it's going to be kind of ucky weather. And those crazy kids drive straight 16 hours or something like that. So, Travel blessings for Gabe and Kim. I don't know how you're going to make the mission meeting on Saturday morning. Oh, Ken, dog died. Oh. oh. Good, buddy. Well, we'll keep them in prayer. That's a tough time. I'd like to continue prayer for my friend Jill Ferrola. Um, she's doing chemo and radiation and moving into an um, independent living facility because she can no longer get around her house. Continue prayers for Jill. Anyone else?
Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for drawing us to this place. We just thank you, Lord, for the gift of baptism, the gift of the waters that that cleanse us from those things that, that keep us away from you, Lord. We give you thanks for allowing us to remember uh, the gift that you have given us, the eternal gift of, of, of life that you have uh, offered to each and every one. Lord God, we gather here with joy. We gather here with celebration. We gather here knowing that you are with us every moment of our life, every step of the way. Lord God, thank you for the gift of your eternal presence with us. As we gather here this day, we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you, Lord, for our friends, for our family. We thank you for those who work tirelessly for you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the, the leaders of this church, all the volunteers of this church. We thank you, Lord, for the calling you've placed upon all the lives here too, Lord God. We, we thank you, Lord, uh, for the privilege of serving you. Lord God, we, we do uh, come with joy and thanksgiving. At the same time, Lord, we also come with, with uh, many things laying upon our hearts, and we lift those up to you as well, Lord God. Many, many people are going to be traveling here the upcoming day and, and days, and we pray travel blessings upon them. Uh, we pray for the, for the troop that will be going down to Atlanta. We pray for safety, safe passage uh, for Kim and Gabe and all those others, Lord God, who will be going back to school. Uh, we just pray a hedge of protection uh, around them, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for those who, who grieve the loss of loved ones this day. We pray for those that that are recovering from surgeries, those who are anticipating surgeries, those who are, who are awaiting uh, test results. Lord God, those who just need your strength uh, in their lives, Lord. Uh, we pray for, for prayers that are unspoken by voice, but you know uh, in, in our hearts uh, the prayers of our heart and, and our soul. Uh, Lord God, we pray for those who cannot be here this day, those who are homebound, those who are sick, uh, those who are hospitalized, those, Lord God, who are, who are struggling with their faith, uh, struggling with all types of issues. Lord God, we, we do uh, pray for those who can't make it just because of the weather, Lord God. We just pray that you be with them as well. Uh, Lord God, we, we lift up the family and friends of Rick Jantz, and we pray that that their mourning may turn to joy with certain hope and affirmation of eternal life for the one they have lost. Lord God, we, we lift up also Joe and Carson. We pray for Tony and Tricia and Jill, Karen and Ed, for John and Ruth, for Paul and June, for Kent and Linda, for Cheryl and Andy and Bridget, and for all those others, Lord God, we lift it up to you by voice or deep within our souls. We pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one that they may be healed in body and nourished in faith. Now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Tired? Yes. Me too. <laughs> but you're here, and we're all here together, and we're celebrating some great things today. We're going to be talking about baptism and communion together today. We've got our wonderful fountain here, and it is. Let's go touch it. Come on. Touch it. You can touch it. You're allowed. It's wet. It's with water. And there's water all around us today, isn't there? Not only here, but outside, right? And that some of us are grateful for the rain, and other of us want the snow. But water is with us, right? Everywhere we go. We've got our water bottles. Do you have a water bottle for school in your lunchbox? Or do you get water bottles all the time? Does everybody have water bottles in their house or buy them all the time or <laughs> refill one? <laughs> There's water everywhere around us, and our bodies need this, don't we? Well, isn't the water like Jesus in God? The water refreshes us. It brings us new life. If we didn't have water, what wouldn't grow? Crops, food. Flowers, these beautiful flowers around us. And our bodies, we would all just kind of shrivel up, right? And no matter what, this water is always going to be available for us. The nature is going to bring it to us through the rain, through the snow, through our getting it to drink. Don't you guys feel kind of funny when you don't have enough water? And are we supposed to drink like eight or ten of these or even more? <laughs> yes. And it really helps us, and not only health-wise, but spiritually. The water is for us. And up here, we've got our picture of the water new life. It's a symbol. And it's, it, it's, it's real. It's life. It happens. Life will not exist without water. And Jesus is our water, right? Jesus and God. Okay, let's pray real quick. Okay? Here. Hold hands. Dear God, thank you for this great day to be reminded again that Jesus is our water, is our life. And as long as we always allow him into our life, we are always going to be filled with his good message and his goodwill. Amen. <coughs> our scripture lesson today is taken from Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 4. You can follow along in your pew Bibles on 1124. Here is my servant whom I uphold, may chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on the earth. In his law, the islands will pop, I'm sorry, in the islands will put their hope. Please let us get back with our tithes and offerings.
blessings we have received throughout our lives, the blessings of the privilege of being able to serve you uh, with our hands and with the resources that you have blessed us with. Bless these gifts, bless our lives to your use. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Shortly after I answered the call to ministry, fought with God a lot, decided to be a chaplain in the hospital, then after God laughed, I began to serve in the local church. And one of the first Sundays I was at my first appointment, a retired pastor came up to me and said, Tom, there's one important thing I need you to remember. Any Methodist preacher worth their salt will often remind the people to remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. So I started thinking about it, and I, we sat down for a while, and I said, well, what about me? I was baptized as an infant in a hospital. I don't remember my baptism. In fact, I would say most Methodists were baptized as infants. They don't remember their baptism either. And so you want me to ask these folk to do something that cannot be done. Well, this conversation is not unlike the conversation Jesus had with a fellow by the name of Nicodemus. When you get home tonight, read John chapter 3, and it's a story about a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus wanted to see Jesus, thought Jesus was a pretty good guy, but he didn't want anybody to know that he believed in Jesus, didn't want anybody to know about his faith. You know, he wanted to have that private faith thing, which is kind of silly. And so in the, in the dead of night, he goes to talk to Jesus. Now, Nicodemus, if you recall, was also the one who helped Joseph of Arimathea uh, bury Jesus after the crucifixion. And so he was very much a part of this story. Well, when he, he met Jesus, the first thing Jesus said to him was, Nick, Nobody can see the kingdom of God without being born again. Nicodemus looked at Jesus and said, I don't get it. I'm 28 years old. I can't go back into my mother's womb. I can't be born again. What are you trying to tell me? And Jesus continued, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. For the next year or three, I am sure that Nicodemus continued to wonder about what he had just heard, for it was all very strange to his ears, and perhaps it's very strange to our ears as well. But we gather here this morning to remember to celebrate our baptism. Baptism is one of the two sacraments of the Christian church, the other being Holy Communion, which we will be privileged to, to celebrate as well. 
Baptism is a washing away of all that hinders us from God. Uh, you may call that sin, call it what you want. It's those barriers that keep us away from knowing the joy of faith. That's what the waters of baptism does. So it's just not about white gowns and parties. Not just a chance to celebrate life. Baptism. Your baptism and my baptism is a celebration of the joy of faith. The joy that God has given to each and every one of us. It is the beginning and the fulfillment of the journey we are all on. Saints, baptism is important. It's critical that we remember. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement in England would say that baptism is nothing more than an outward sign of an inward grace. You see, from the time that each of us were conceived, God's grace was there. God's grace was planted within us before we even knew we were we. (laughs) Before we were born. Check out Jeremiah chapter 1 when Jeremiah was was telling God that you had the wrong guy. And God said, before you were born, no, before that, before you were conceived, I knew you. And before you were conceived, I consecrated you. Saints, we're all consecrated. What consecration is, it is, is being set apart to do ministry. It is being set apart to witness the good news of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is, it is the opportunity for us to share the joy of living. Baptism is our opportunity to open our hearts to the reality of God's love working within our soul. But there are times when we have to be reminded. For me, after a few decades of sojourning with folks in need, of preaching, I began to understand I began to understand what that preacher was trying to tell me. See, I'm a little bullheaded every once in a while. I guess that's that Irish blood, I have to say. But I finally got it. You see, we need to be reminded. We have to remember. Because as you and I all know, that life can get in the way every once in a while. Jesus had to be be reminded by God the Father at his baptism. If you go back and read the scripture text, God said to Jesus, you are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. You see, Jesus had to be reminded. The interesting thing about, about about Jesus' baptism, according to each of the four gospels, is that uh, this was the time when Jesus began his earthly ministry. This is the time when the Holy Spirit rested upon him, which it was already within him, but now it was made known to the world what the gift was of salvation through Jesus Christ. That was when it all began. You are my beloved. That affirmation by God is through the Holy Spirit. Hence, being born through water and the Spirit. For the water of baptism is cleansing. The Spirit saves our soul from ever forgetting that we are beloved. But again, life gets in the way every once in a while. For some, 2016 could be over today. 
For some, 2016 hadn't started out that great. These flowers are from Rick Jantz's funeral. The Jantz family would just as soon start 2016 over again. And when those things start happening, whether death or, or, or pain of, of any type start happening, we start putting God in the margins of our life because we're so involved with what's going on in our lives that, that we don't have time for God seemingly. And with all those challenges, we, we stop hearing God's call. You see, God has called us and continues to call each of us in the ministry. That's why I had to kind of laugh at Nicodemus coming in the dead of night. And anybody who says, well, faith is private. Faith, a private faith, is antithetical to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Faith is public. Faith is a witness of the good news of Jesus Christ. But see, when, when life gets in the way, We fail to see that. The stuff of life can hinder us from seeing God. Obscures our view. You see, baptism is not only our beginning, our rebirth. It is our rebirth into eternal life the fulfillment of our baptism is our death. You see, it never ends. It continues. God intends for us to live today with an eye on tomorrow. God intends for us to live with the joy of believing that our Lord and Savior is with us every moment of our life, even to the end of the age. God intends for us to live today even in the midst of the stuff that gets in the way. So there are times when we just need to start over. Time to clean house. You know what's often interesting to me? After the first of the year, actually after Christmas, you go into Home Depot, and what are they selling in the front? Plastic boxes. Little boxes, medium-sized boxes, big boxes. You can snap them shut, and you can put stuff in the boxes. And so we might say, well, that's great. We can organize our stuff in boxes. But if we organize our stuff in boxes, what do we got? Stuff in boxes. That's not cleaning, saints. That's just shifting around our stuff, putting it in a $10 box until next year. And we open it up and realize that, hey, we might need some of that stuff. And we never do, you see. But cleaning house spiritually is kind of a lot the same way because sometimes we hang on to so much stuff. We might repackage it, but it's still there. That keeps us from God. And God is saying, no, remember your baptism. Remember the cleansing that you had. Don't just refill the same old box. Empty out that stuff and live a new life. Live a joyous life. Live a life that I have intended for you from the beginning of time. We need to remember that, saints. We need to remember that God has intended for us to live. Live in abundance. And so life is on a continuum, and it's a series of new beginnings. And we have to remember that, too. Every moment's a new moment to celebrate. Every moment is a new moment to celebrate the joy of the Lord. 
every moment is a time that we can remember our baptism. Saints, we are part of a grand design. Being baptized, we also say, is initiated into this body of Christ. Well, consider the body of Christ this, this mosaic of all these different people that come together, all interwoven into one. We were driving around one day, it was raining. And couldn't do much else. I was thinking about not much. You ever just drive around, not think? Well, I was driving. I mean, I was thinking about driving. But it just seemed like there was a void. And I needed something. And I was looking around and, and, and not sure what that something was, but I needed something. You ever feel like that? That I just needed a little spark? Well, it came to me. There was a tune that came on the radio that shocked my soul into remembering, into being reminded. It was a reminder for me that we are a part of God's glorious body, then that God wants us to be reborn, to see the joy of living as a child, as a child would see for the first time beyond the crib, you know, with an eye of wonder. Listen to these words by Tia Sillers and Mark Sanders. And this tune was made popular by Leanne Womack and entitled, I Hope You Dance. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take a single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leaves you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. Saints, God is hoping that we dance. God is hoping that we stand up and we dance. God is hoping that we remember the joy that God has instilled in our soul. God is hoping that we get into the game. God is hoping that we feel the sensation of exuberation because of God's presence with us. That's what God wants. That's the God that hopes and dreams for us. That tune was my reminder to be humble before God. To stand along the ocean shore and realize how infinitesimally small I am and how gracious and big God is. A reminder that the world may seem wildly out of control and that is the time when faith in Jesus Christ is needed even more. Sometimes we need to be reminded. Saints, remember your baptism. Remember the gift of eternal life. Remember that through baptism, we realize the gift of Jesus Christ, who offered his body and his blood so we may live a new life, that we may be reborn. Remember the joy of believing, even when life's bitter crosses cloud memory. Remember the sun, even in the midst of the storm. God went to the ends of the earth to give you life in abundance. Remember your baptism. Give Jesus Christ 
a fighting chance. You do have a choice. When God calls you to dance, what are you going to do? I'm going to dance. What are you going to do? Dance. What are you going to do? Is anybody going to dance? We're going to dance. Remember your baptism. There are some dancers in the back. Remember your baptism, for you are beloved. Amen. This morning, we celebrate a reaffirmation of our baptism. This is not re-baptism. This is just a reminder of who we are and whose we are. And so what uh, I will ask is to come up and, and, and feel the waters of baptism. Just feel as a reminder of God's gift. And then as you do that, uh, go and partake of the Lord's Supper as an affirmation of your faith, an intention of being part of this holy body. So as the ushers please come forward, let us uh, reaffirm our baptism and pray together. There is an insert in the bulletin and should be also on the on the projection as well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. Through our reaffirmation, we humbly confess that we need to be reminded of all that you have offered to us and seek to live transformed by your grace. As the waters of baptism have cleansed us, help us to affirm our commitment to you and your church. As we celebrate our baptism, let us also come to your holy table and commune as one body at the table you have prepared for us. Now on behalf of the whole church, I ask you all, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives to the world? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Eternal and gracious God, when nothing else existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light, formed us in your image, and breathed into us the breath of life. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, You led them to freedom through the sea. You delivered us from captivity and made a covenant to be our sovereign God. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, 
nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. By the baptism of Christ suffering for death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As we remember our own baptism, we re remember that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, but loved us so much he offered hope, promising to be with us always in the power and presence of his word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gathered, Together with his disciples in that upper room, he took bread, gave thanks to you, blessed it, and broke it, and said, This is my body, it is broken for you. Take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, giving thanks to you, blessed it, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the, for the ministry to all the world. Take and drink in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. As we remember our baptism and celebrate the nourishment of your holy food, we pray that your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with your holy spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ. Take the communion first. Take the body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, by your Holy Spirit, let us never forget the gift of eternal life you have offered to each and every one of us. That reaffirming our own baptism, may we witness the joy of believing to the world around us. Help us to live a life that is worthy in your sight, inspired by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us stand and sing together the hymn of imitation.
of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen. Thank you.